Now, an area of your research, I think it's called sensory dysregulation. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your work in that area. So here we are at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. We were quite used to the sound of ambulances going by to, our, to the hosp associated hospitals. And you or I won't pass any remarks on that at all. It's, it's, you know, indeed, we'd hardly notice it. I doubt we'd notice it. But an autistic child, you know, for, for that child, that same ambulance could be excruciating, putting the hands over the ears and rocking to try and exclude that information. And so, so these sensory, this sort of sensory reactivity has been uh, known for many years. And quite a lot of people theorize that this might, there might be a sensory integration problem. And they gave rise to this notion of a, the out of sync child. In the intervening decades, there's been very, very little evidence or even any attempts at research to uh, establish whether this was true or not. So, so there are certainly uh, many, many clinics out there providing sensory integration therapy, but was, it, was this even broken? Do we really know that there's a problem in, in autism with that? So that's one of the things that our research group has been working on over the last decade or so. Using electrophysiology, neuroimaging techniques, we've been able to show that indeed there is a real issue with the sensory integration. There's a very interesting aspect to this. So what we find is that in high-functioning autistic children, so these are children with, with uh, normal uh, IQ, typical IQ. They may have a place in the workplace, they're functioning at home to some degree. Absolutely, yeah, indeed. And, and uh, so, so their perform what we call their performance IQ is identical to the average kids out there. Uh, and some of them even have very high uh, IQs. But what we found is that in these children between the ages of about five and 12 years of age, they show a severe deficits in this multisensory integration, particularly for, for speech and for communication. But rather remarkably, when these children hit the teenage years, this ability recovers. And that was a real puzzle. That is, a, it remains a real puzzle to us why it recovers. But from the perspective of treatment, that's a really good news. That means that whatever is going on there, whatever is broken in these, uh, in these uh, early childhood years is fundamentally fixable. If you can recover at 13 years of age, then presumably if we can devise the right kinds of interventions, this can be recovered at five or six years of age. That's the key. And so we're working on some uh, interventions around that and uh, uh, trying to improve multisensory speech integration and we're really in the beginning stages of that.